Suppose case any integer such that the equation 2x square plus kx plus 5 equal to 0 has no real roots and the equation x square plus k minus 5x plus 1 equal to 0 has two distinct real roots for x. Then the number of possible values of case. The first one discriminant should be less than 0. Second one discriminant should be greater than 0. Not even greater, not equal to. Let me attack it. For the first one, it is k square minus 4 into 2 into 5 is less than 0. And this k square is less than 40. So we're talking about 36 is the perfect square. We're talking about integers. So k goes from minus 6. plus 6. We have 13 values with us here. Most likely 13 is not the answer because we have one more condition here. And the equation x square minus plus k minus 5x plus 1 is equal to has two distinct real roots. So k minus 5 the whole square is gre greater than 4. It's not even greater than or equal to 4. It is greater than 4. p square minus 4ac is greater than 0. That's all. So x k minus 5 the whole square is greater than 4. What values could this be? We have to simplify this. I think we can even substitute from there and then try it out. k minus 5 whole square or k minus 5 should k minus 5 should be greater than 2 or k minus 5 is less than minus 2. k less than minus 2 plus 5 less than 3 or k greater than 7. k greater than 7 won't work k less than 3 will work, k equal to 3 won't work. So we're talking about from 2 downwards the whole thing will work. We're talking about 2, 1, 0 and then minus 1 to minus 6. Minus 6 to minus 1, 6 values, 0, 1, 2, all of them work. You put k equal to 0, 0 minus 5 the whole square, yeah, 1, 2, yeah, it works. So 9 values here, we're done. Discriminant greater than, greater than 0, sorry, discriminant less than 0, discriminant greater than 0, simply 5, we are through. Just integer solution, that's something we need to be careful about. The minimum possible value of x square minus 6x plus 10 by 3 minus x for x less than 3. Very, very nice question. This is not factorizable. Something is not factorizable. Factorizing is trick 1 and quadratic equation. Trick 2. Immediately after that is the idea of completion of squares. I'm going to write that number as x square minus 6x plus 9 plus 1 by 3 minus x. This is x minus 3 whole square plus 1 by 3 minus x. x minus 3 whole square, 3 minus x whole square, both are same. And so this is 3 minus x the whole square plus 1 by 3 minus x. We told very clearly that x is less than 3. So we can say x minus or 3 minus x is greater than 0. We can say 3 minus x equal to k. This becomes k square plus 1 by k or k plus 1 by k k plus 1 by k is either greater than or equal to 2 or less than or equal to minus 2. It cannot be less than or equal to minus 2 because we know x is less than 3, k is positive. And k is positive, so the minimum possible value is 2 done through. If we can rewrite this like this and then rejig this like this, we are through. Bob can finish a job in 40 days if he works alone. Alex is twice as fast as Bob and thrice as fast as Cole in the same job. Bob, Alex, Cole. Alex is twice as fast as Bob and thrice as fast as Cole. If this were x, or I'm going to say Alex is 6x per day, Bob will be 3x per day, and Cole will be 2x per day. Suppose Alex and Bob work together on the first day, Bob and Cole work together on the second day, Cole and Alex work together on the third day, and then they continue the work by repeating this three day roster with Alex and Bob working together on the fourth day and so on. The number of days Alex would have worked when the job gets finished. Nice question. How much? So Bob can do 3x in a day, Alex can do 6x in a day, Cole can do 2x in a day. Integers really help. Total task is 3x into 40, 120x. On day one, we get 10, 9x. First, we have Alex and Bob, then Bob and Cole. And then coal and Alex. Bob and coal, that is day two, is 5x. Then day three, day three is coal and Alex work together, that is 8x. We have to go up to 120x. Three day cycle, we do 9 plus 5 plus 8, 14 plus 8, 22x. So we do this three day cycle 10 times over, sorry, 5 times over, 22x into 5 
is 110x. So day 16 would be back, back to day 1 where we do 9x and then day 17 is when it gets finished. So Alex has worked 5 days, no not 5 days, 10 days, full cycles, 5 full cycles, in each cycle he works 2 days, A and B, B and C, C and A completely. So in this 5 cycles, Alex has worked 10 days, Bob has worked 10 days, Cole has worked 10 days. And then day 16, Alex and Bob work. So again, Alex gets one more day. Day 17 is Bob and Cole. That would have been the tricky day. Do you count it or not count it? Because it's, it's, it's half a day, not a full day. Luckily for us, we don't have to do it. Then the number of days Alex would have worked when the job gets finished is 10 plus 1, 11 days. Lovely. A glass containing 500 cc of milk and a cup containing 500 cc of water. Nice. Glass. And cup. Right. This is 500 cc of milk. This is 500 cc of water. Nice. From the glass, 150 cc of milk is transferred to the cup and mixed thoroughly. Nice. Next, 150 cc of this mixture is transferred from the cup to the glass. Now, the amount of water in the glass and the amount of milk in the cup are in the ratio. Nice. Beautiful. Fine. So, we take 150 ml, pour it into this. We take 150 ml from there, pour it into this. So once we pour here, this becomes 650 ml. And then we take 150 and pour it in here. It's again come back to 500. It goes from 500 to 350, back to 500. It goes from 500 to 650, back to 500. Nice. Amount of water in the glass and the amount of milk in the cup are in the ratio. Brilliant, brilliant. So finally, it's going to be some water and some milk. So let's say lots of milk is there. The remaining is water. Likewise, lots of water is there. Remaining is milk. Brilliant. Now think about this. It's a beautiful question. Because some amount of milk is there. So we have 500 ml. Some amount of milk is there. Let's say 396.825 ml. Okay. The remaining is water. Yes. Up to 500 ml, the remaining is water. This remaining is water because that amount of milk has been taken away and put where? Put here. And so this were 396 ml, remaining 104 ml would be water. Where has that 104 ml of water got its space from? Where have, this, where have we got the space to put 104 ml of water here? Because 104 ml of milk has been removed and put here. Or in a very roundabout fashion because we started with 500 ml of milk and 500 ml of water. The amount of water in milk and milk in water has got to be the same. We can do this algebraically, arithmetically, but, but it's far juicier to think about it conceptually. What are saying? This was what milk originally, now it has become water. Because, because my final ml is the same. So this much milk has been taken away from this container and then replaced with water. Taken away and put where? Put here. Or the milk here and the water here are same, one is to one. Done. Super juicy question if you think about it like this. In an examination, the average marks of students in section A and B are 32 and 60 respectively. A and B, which is 32 and 60. The number of students in section A is 10 less than that in section B. N and plus 10. The average marks of all the students across both the sections combined is an integer. The difference between the maximum and minimum possible number of students in section A is it's an integer. So you have 32 and 60. Right? So I'm going to think about can the average in between be 33? Can the average in between be 59? And so we want to find the maximum and difference between the maximum and minimum possible number of students in section A. Right? To start with, 32 and 60 smack in between these two, 92 by 2 equals 46. Nice. So the average is more than 46. Why? This weightage is higher. Nice and simple. Nothing more than that. So what do we do? We say, hey, I put this as 32, put this as 60, and then say this difference is 47. Hypothetically, it cannot be 46. We know it's an integer. Make it 47. So what is the ratio? This could be 13 is to 15. The difference between these two is, is 2x. 2x is 10. That means this could be 65 students and 75 students and this will work. 
so it could be 47 47 is possible next what do we do we say hey nice juicy we make it 32 and 60 make the average in between as 59 because it can go as much as possible to that side what's the ratio this is 1 and this is 27 the ratio is 1 is to 27 the difference is 26 that cannot be a uh, that cannot be in a 26 x cannot be 10 this is out so don't make it 59 make it 58 make it 2 and 26 difference is 24x that doesn't work make this 3 and 25 difference is 22x doesn't work make it 4 and 24 difference is 21x doesn't work i want the difference to be equal to 10 the sum of these two is 28 the difference should be a multiple of 10 so this difference 4 and 24 that 4 to 24 the difference is 20x 20x equal to 10 is that even possible let me think 32 60 weighted average being 4 away from here so this is 56 this is 24 this is 4 the ratio is 1 is to 6 yep this being 10 the difference being 10 that means this is 2 this is 12 that is possible so the, the other extreme when we take the ratio to be 4 and 24 the difference is 20x 20x cannot be 10 but 4 is to 24 which is 1 is to 6 5x can be 10 which is what we are plugging here 2 and 12 so the number of students minimum number can be 2 maximum number which we did here can be 65 in class a the difference between the maximum and minimum possible number of students in a 65 minus 2 63 should be the answer yeah done classic beautiful question in allegations you plunk the number in and then find out this largest possible average is 59 but that doesn't work 58 57 56 that works plunk it in smallest possible average is 47 that works directly we are through let r be a real number and f of x equal to 2x minus r if x is greater than or equal to r and r if x is less than r very interesting equation f of x equal to f of f of x holds for all real values of x where blah 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 and so let's do this r be a real number f of x equal to r if x is less than r let's say if this is r so the graph will be x f of x equal to r till here equal to 2x minus r so at r it will become r after that it keeps increasing the graph like this this is f of x Nice. f of x equal to f of f of x holds good for all real values of x where x is less than or equal to r x is greater than or equal to r x is greater than r so i'm not i'm worried about this because whenever f becomes greater than r i'm in trouble and so i don't really like this because if i put f of phi r f of x equal to 2x minus r 2 into phi r minus r 10 r minus r 8 r f of 8r 16r minus r is 15r after this f of x starts flying becomes more and more and so greater than or equal to r greater than r i don't like these two f of x will not be equal to f of f of x f of phi r is large f of large as in f of phi r is 8r 2 into phi r minus r so 2 into phi r minus r is 9r sorry f of 9r 2 into 9 18 minus 1 17r so it will keep becoming bigger so at r f of r is equal to r that i know f of r is equal to r and so if, so f of any number less than that f of r by 2 is r f of r is r so i know that this won't work this won't work this work x not equal to r doesn't work because greater than r doesn't work at all it starts flying away so this work the diagram is super useful imagining it diagrammatically is super useful greater than r doesn't work it starts flying away so we come back and simplify it suppose the medians bd and c of triangle abc intersect at a point o let's draw this abc bd and c the area of triangle abc is 108 centimeters 
area of triangle EOD, BD, and CE. You want to find area of triangle EOD. Nice, brilliant. How do we do this? Rather good question. The medians break the triangle into six parts of equal area. If I draw all three medians, all equal. Why? These two are equal, this is a median, these two are equal, this is a median, these two are equal, this is a median. And we can prove that each of the these bigger chunks are equal to each other. The um, three medians break the triangle into six parts of equal area. And so, so this is totally 108. The total area is 108. So this will be one third of that 36. This is BOC. Right? And this one will be half of that 18. This one will be half of that 18. Nice, wonderful. So if we can find AED, I can find AEOD. Nice. If I can find AED, I'm through. I can find EOD. How do I find AED? AED is just half of ABC. This is half, this is half. That will, this will also be half midpoint theorem. Our area is one fourth of area of triangle ABC. ABC area is 108. 108 by 4, this is 27. Out of the 108, we have accounted for 36 plus 36, 72. With 36 remaining, 27 is accounted for here, that's 9. 108 minus 27 minus 18 minus 18 minus 36. Absolutely brilliant question. It really helps to know this. Really helps to know midpoint theorem similarity. Area of AED is one fourth. But if you can just chart all of those down without having to process anything, this question becomes nicely doable. That may mean of all distinct numbers that can be obtained by rearranging the digits in one four two one, including itself. It's a nice question. One four two one. How many rearrangements do we have? 4 factorial by 2, 12 rearrangements. Starting with 1, there are 6 rearrangements. Starting with 4, there are 6, 3, and 3. So if I add up all the unit digit, I'll have 1 appearing, same pattern will repeat 6 times, 4 appearing 3 times, 2 appearing 3 times. So sum of all unit digit, 6 plus 12 plus 6, which is 1824. Nice, brilliant. An arithmetic mean is what we need to find. So, sum of all unit digit is 12, or sum of all the numbers is 24 in the, in the units place, 24 in the tens place, 24 in the twelfth place, and 24 in the thousand. Sorry, units place, tens place, hundredth place, thousandth place. So, sum of all of this is going to be 24 into 1111. Average of all those numbers is this divided by 12. Why the 12 numbers? Sum of all of them is 24 into 1111. Average is that divided by 12. How do I get 24? Sum of all units place is 12, uh, is 24. Sum of all tens place, 100th place, 1000th place will also be 12. It's symmetric. So sum of all the numbers is 24 ones plus 24 tens plus 24 hundred plus 24 thousands. 24 into 1111. That is a total of all the numbers divided by 12. That is the average, which is this number. 11111. 1111 into 2. Neetu has an initial capital of 20,000. Out of this, she invests 8,000 at 5% in bank A, 5,000 at 5.6% in bank B, 20K, 8K at 5.5%, 5K at 5.6%. The remaining at X percent in bank B, 8 plus 5 is 13, 7K at C, at X percent. Her combined annual interest income from these investments is equal to 5% of the initial capital. Nice. 5.5, 5.6, overall being 5, this should be lower. If she had invested her entire capital in bank C alone, then her annual income would have been. So we find this X percent and then we are through. Overall average is 5 point is 5%. We can find the averages and then simplify with the weighted average thing or find the actual amount. 8k at 5.5% is 440. 5% is 400. Another half percent, 440. 5.6% at 5k is 280. 20k at 5% is, is 1000. 440 plus 280 is 0, 2, 
720. So this or 7k gets her 280. 1000 minus 720. Which is a return of 4%. 5.5, 5.6 will average to 5.55, something there. That is at 4%. Built average closer to this. Yeah, it should work 5%. We're getting 4%. If you had invested the entire amount there, 20k at 4% gives us 80. Rather juicy, simple arithmetic question. You should look at this and gobble it up. Two cars travel from different locations at constant speeds to meet each other after starting at the same time. They take 1.5 hours if they travel towards each other and 10 and a half hours if they travel in the same direction. Nice. If the speed of the slower car is 60 km per hour, then the distance traveled in kilometers by the slower car when it meets the other car while traveling towards each other. I had to look at this question like twice over, thrice over. Right? So the question says, if they move towards each other, they take 1.5 hours. They move in the opposite direction. That is this starting from, sorry, let me just erase this, make it super clear. They take 10 and a half hours. This guy has to catch up with that guy. And so the relative speed, relative speed, substitute that, find their individual speeds, their ratios and all of that. The question says, the speed of the slower car is 60 kilometers. The distance traveled in kilometers by the slower car when it meets the other car while traveling towards each other. It takes one and a half hours to meet meter, traveling at 60 kilometers per hour. Nothing, we don't need to solve anything. The speed is given, time traveled is given. The slower car is traveling at 60 kilometers per hour. It travels one and a half hours before it meets. How much distance will it travel? 60 kilometers per hour into one and a half, 90 kilometers. I spent an inordinate amount of time on this question because I found everything. I was like, what? Am I missing something? I had to, I had to pause and take, take stock and then, and then mark the answer. Till the end, I was not confident. Turns out it is right. Square root of 7 by 5 whole power 3x minus 5 is equal to 875 by 2401. 4a by b power 6x minus y equals 2a by b power y minus 6x. Seems like a well, rather tough question, but it's, it's actually not. And so 4a by b for all non-zero real values of a and b. And so this, I know 2401 is a power of 7. That really helps. 49 square is 2401. So this is 7 power 4. When I was looking for this being a power of 5, which it was not. But 875, I know, is 1000 into 7 by 8. And so, so this number can be written as 125 into 7 by 7 power 4. Or this is 5 by 7 whole cube is equal to 7 by 5 whole power 3x minus y by 2. Square root of 7 by 5. And so this is 5 by 7 whole cube, this is 7 by 5 power this. So this number is 7 by 5 power 7 by 5 power minus 1 is 5 by 7. 7 by 5 power minus 2 is 5 by 7 whole square. So this becomes minus of this and it should become equal to this. So I can rewrite this as this is 5 by 7 whole power y minus 3x by 2 minus of that is equal to 5 by 7 whole cube. Beautiful question because you have to crack that thing or y minus 3x by 2 is this y minus 3x is equal to 6. Y f minus 3x by 2 is equal to this. this question I got confused because there's a 4a by b here and a 2a by b here. But this says for all non-zero real values of a and b, for all values is equal or this should be 0, this should be 0. Both should go to 0 Therefore, anything power 0 is anything power 0. It goes to 1, doesn't work. It goes to 2, it doesn't work. For all values of non-zero values of A and B. So, there got to, there's going to be an A and B remaining. Even if I put A and B to, to, to in some form the power to be equal, there's a 4 and 2 remaining. Only thing that will work is 0. 6x minus y should be equal to y minus 6x equal to 0 or y is equal to 6x. 6x minus 3x is equal to 6. 3x is 6. x is 2. y is 12. x equal to 2, y equal to 12 satisfies all of this. Value of x plus y is 2 plus 12, 14. Moody takes 30 seconds to finish riding an escalator if he walks on it on a normal speed in the same direction. 
it takes 20 seconds to finish riding the escalator if he walks at twice as normal speed in the same direction. And so let's say Moody takes m steps per minute. Escalator takes e steps per minute. So in the first instance, it will take 30 seconds. So 30 m he is doing. Escalator will also be doing this plus 30 that many steps are there. 30 steps per minute I have put I make this as seconds. I don't want to deal with minutes. Very silly thing to take this as minute. I thought it was minute. Let me take this as second. Second. In the second instance she is travelling at twice his normal speed and he becomes 2m steps per second and he covers it in 20 seconds or uh, this should be equal to 60m. Sorry, 40m plus 20e. The escalator is going only for 20 seconds, 20e. He is going only for 20 seconds but travelling at 2m. So 40m plus 20e, that many steps get covered. Which is equal to 30m plus 30e. Manipulate this, bring e this side, m that side. 10e equal to 10m, e is equal to m. Escalator's number of steps per second is equal to Moody's number of steps per second. If Moody decides to stand still on the escalator in the time in seconds needed for riding the escalator, total distance is 30m plus 30e, he goes to 0. That means this also has to be done by e, m is equal to e, 60 seconds we are done. Consider 6 distinct natural numbers such that the average of the two smallest numbers is 14. a, b, sum is 28, average is 14. The average of the two largest numbers is 28. These two sum is 56, average is 28. Nice. Then the maximum possible value of the average of these six numbers. Nice. Two numbers averaging out to 28. We told very clearly distinct natural numbers. And we have written them, let's say we have written them in sequence A, B, C, D, E, F. A less than B less than C less than D less than E less than F. Nice. So E less than F adding up to 56. 28 plus 28 doesn't work. We want numbers to be as high as possible. These two averaging to 14. This can be anything. I can put 13 and 15 here. But those two, I want to put 27 and 29. Why? I want E to be as high as possible. Why? Because my missing two numbers are C and D. I want to take them as high as possible. So E should be as high as possible 27, 29. If I put 26, 30, E becomes lower. What can I put here? No condition. Make this 26. Make this 25. Add everything up. We are through. So these two add up to 28, those two add up to 56, 84 plus 25 plus 26 is 51 divided by 6. 84 plus 51 is 135 by 6 divided by 3, 45 by 2, 22 and a half. Done. Excellent. Beautiful question. If 3 plus 2 root 2 is the root of the equation ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0 and 4 plus 2 root 3 is the root of the equation ay square plus my plus n equal to 0, where a, b, c, m, n are integers, then what is the value of this thing? Very simple, if 3 plus 2 root 2 is a root, then the other root is 3 minus 2 root 2, and the conjugate pair. If 4 plus 2 root 3 is a root, 4 minus 2 root 3 is a root. What is the sum of the roots? The first one, the roots are 3 plus 2 root 2 and 3 minus 2 root 2. So, minus b by a is equal to 6. Right. What is the product of the roots? Product of the roots is c by a. 3 plus 2 root 2 into 3 minus root 2 root 2. 3 square minus 2 root 2 square. 3 square is 9, 2 root 2 square is 8. 9 minus 8 is 1. Second one, the roots are 4 plus 2 root 3 and 4 minus 2 root 3. Sum of the roots is minus m by a. This is 4 plus 4, 8. Product of the roots is n by a. 4 into 4 is 16 minus 2 root 3 into 2 root 3, 2 square into 3, 12, 16 minus 12 is 4. Nice. We need to do b by m. So what is b? b is, everything can be written in terms of a. b is minus 6a, c equals a, m is minus 8a and n is 4a. b by m is minus 6a by minus 8a, which is nice. <coughs> which is 3 by 4 plus c minus 2b which is a minus minus 6a 
divided by n which is 4a minus 2b a minus 2 into minus 6a minus 6a into 2 let me make it very clear there's some ambiguity here minus 6a into 2 lovely this is 3 by 4 a minus minus 12a is a plus 12a 13 by 4 so 3 by 4 plus 13 by 4 this is 3 by 4 that is 13 by 4 3 by 4 plus 13 by 4 is 16 by 4 which is 4 it all worked out rather well for us right? so nothing but the understanding that roots come in conjugate pairs and the idea that some of the roots is minus b by a product of the roots is c by a plonk it in you're through is it like this 16x by y 16x by y plus 49 y by x we rewrite this like this let's say x by y is k then y by x is 1 by k so this number is 16k plus 49 by k and so nice wonderful so i can say 16k plus 49k by 2 is greater than or equal to square root of 16k into 49 by k arithmetic mean of these two is greater than or equal to geometric mean of that or subtract that and make create a perfect square and then simplify that and so this is assuming k is positive if k were negative it will be correspondingly the other way around going down and so so 16k plus 49k by 2 is greater than or equal to this cancel this this is 4 that is 7 greater than or equal to 28 16k plus 49 by k is greater than or equal to 56 or 16k plus 49 by k less than or equal to minus 56 if k were negative i can establish this right so it's either greater than or equal to 56 or less than or equal to minus 56 so greater than or equal to 56 this is possible less than or equal to minus 56 this is possible this is possible this here is not possible so i have a scenario where 16k plus 49k by 2 is greater than or equal to square root of ab then simplify it accordingly and so very much like our everybody knows this rule which is say y plus 1 by y is greater than or equal to 2 or less than or equal to minus 2 this is very much like that very much like that just a slightly changed numbers nothing more than that and so 16x by y 49y by x very much we're writing it as 16k plus 49 by k greater than or equal to 56 less than or equal to minus 56 that's what we are doing and so, so simplifying it like that rewriting it rejigging it like that a donation box can receive only checks of 100, 250 and 500 rupees. On one good day, the donation box was found to contain exactly 100 checks amounting to a total of 15250. And so what does it have? Rupees 100 rupee notes, 250 rupee notes and 500 rupee notes. Exactly 100 notes amounting to rupees 15250 nice the maximum possible number of checks of rupees 500 that the donation box may have contained and so we want to maximize this the amount is a given we want to have maximum number of 500 rupee note that means the remaining amount should take up uh, should have all come from the lowest denomination max out 500 rupee notes and whatever is remaining make sure that, that comes from here not from here so have only 100 and 500 rupee notes that's our way to maximize 500 rupee notes and if you have 250 rupee notes you're not taking value from them so max to max this out we need to max this out very simple idea i want to have as many 500 rupee notes as possible we have the rest of it come from 100 rupee notes avoid 250 rupee notes have only these two solve for it we should be through now one second suppose i solve for it and then say look 100 and 500 rupee notes are there we want to have as many of this as possible n of this 100 minus n of this solve this we are through i will get to the answer the problem here if you do this and this my total number of amount of money is going to be a multiple of 100 is a multiple of 100 it's a multiple of 500 
my total is going to be a multiple of 100 because I have 15250. I have a pesky 50 here. So I cannot achieve my objective without having 150 rupee note at least. I should have one because otherwise I won't have 15000. So I'm going to think about the 250 rupee note angle because my numbers don't add up without that. With zero 250 rupee notes, I simply cannot achieve this. So I say I want to have as few 250 rupee notes as possible because I want to have maximum 500 and the opposite of that is 100. So I have few 250 are just the remaining between 500s and 100s. That way I'll have 250 as few as possible, 100 as high as possible, therefore resulting in maximum number of 500 rupee notes. That's my idea. So I say nice. So rupees 250 note have one of them. Rupees 500 note have n of them. Rupees 100 therefore will be 99 minus 10. This goes away from 15250. I have 15,000 remaining. 500 into n plus 99 minus n into 100 equal to this. Nice. So this is 500 n minus 100 n which is 400 n plus 9900 is 15000 or subtract that 5100 equal to 400 n 51 by 4 is equal to n that doesn't work that simply doesn't work 51 by 4 is nearly 13 it's 12.75 but hey 12.7 i cannot have 12.75 500 rupee notes so it's not possible to to accommodate with 1 250 rupee notes not working and so next i need to say there need to be more 250 rupee notes to, to manage that you can say therefore i want to figure out a mechanism where i have two or more 250 rupee notes 1 250 rupee note these two adding up to 15000 the numbers don't don't add up in 99 notes i'm not able to achieve it so what do i say have more 250 rupee notes. If I have two 250 rupee notes, they add up to 500. This will be a multiple of 100, this will be a multiple of 100, this will be a multiple of 100. My total cannot be 15250. I need to have an odd number of 250 rupee notes. One 250 rupee note didn't work. Three might work. Put this as three. Have n 500 rupee notes, 97 minus n 100 rupee notes. 750 rupees get accounted for. 15250 minus 750 is 14500 is equal to 500 n plus 97 minus n into 100. 14500 equals 500 n plus 9700 minus 100 n. Bring this to side 4500 plus 300. 4800 equals 400 n this works 48 by 4 n equal to 12 12500 rupee notes 3 to 50 rupee notes the rest being 100 rupee notes we can achieve this objective with 13500 rupee notes we simply can't do this 13 or more not possible 12 we can do this with two key thing is to say if you want maximum 500 rupee notes the remaining money has to come from 100 rupee notes as much as possible. So we're thinking only 500 and 100, that's my objective. But that's not possible. So include 250. Include 1, 250, it's not working. Include 3, 250s, it works. Get through. Two ships are approaching a port along straight routes at constant speeds. Initially, the two ships and the port formed an equilateral triangle which sides 24 kilometers. Nice. This is a port P. Ship 1 is coming from here. Ship 2 is coming from here, forms an equal triangle with sides of 24 kilometers. So this is 24, this is 24 kilometers. When the slower ship traveled 8 kilometers, the angle formed by the new position of the two ships and the port became right angled. The slower ship traveled 8 kilometers. Let's say S1 is a slower ship. It has traveled 8 kilometers. And so this angle is 60, it has traveled 8, so let's say S1 reaches S1 dash, this is 16 kilometers remaining. The faster ship would have reached some point S2 dash, it traveled more, more distance. The angle, the triangle formed by the new positions of the two ships at the port became right angle. This is 60, this is not right angle. 
I'm joining S1 dash, S2 dash and 60. This should be longer. This is shorter. This should be the right angle. This cannot be right angle. This is right angle. This is 60. This is right angle. This is 30. The hypotenuse is 16. So S1 dash, S2 dash P. If I draw, carve out this triangle. S1 dash, S2 dash P. This is 30 degrees. This is 16. This is a right angle. Sine 30 is S2 dash P by S1 dash P. That is half. So this is 16. S2 dash P should be 8. That means S2, S2 dash P should be 16 kilometers. Nice, brilliant. When the faster ship reaches the port, the distance in kilometers between the other ship and the port will be. This is a faster ship. Since the slower ship travels 8 kilometers, the faster ship travels 16 kilometers. But the faster ship is twice as fast as the slower ship. So when the faster ship reaches the port, that means when the faster ship has traveled 24 kilometers, the slower ship should have traveled 6, 12 kilometers, half of that. So when this fellow reaches here, this fellow will be just at the midpoint, <coughs> 12 kilometers. The distance between the other ship and the port will be 12 kilometers. Key thing is finding out that uh, S2 is traveling at twice the speed of S1. Then we through. Beautiful question. The lengths of all four sides of a quadrilateral are integer valued. If three of its sides are valued at 1, 2 and 4, then the total number of possible lengths of the fourth side is nice. 1, 2, 4. This will be the long one. 1, 2, 4. Right? So, for simple rule of thumb, the sum of three sides of a triangle has to be greater than the fourth. Sum of any three, any three sides of a quadrilateral will be greater than the fourth. Why? If I join this, these two are more than this, this plus this is more than this, this plus this plus this, therefore is more than this. Just sum of two sides of a triangle greater than the third, extrapolate it. And so this fellow should be less than 7. 1 plus 2 plus 4 is 7, fellow should be less than 7. R can be 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Except we need to keep in mind that the longer side could be 4. I have to flip the equation the other way around. Draw a triangle which is say x, 1, 2, 4. x plus 1 plus 2 should be greater than 4. x should be greater than 4 minus 3, 1. x cannot be 1. This is ruled out. I can have 1, 2, 2, 4. That's possible. And 1, 2, 4, 6. That's also possible. But I cannot have 1, 1, 2, 4. We cannot have 1, 2, 4, 7. Or the values this can take are 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. How many values are there? Five of them. Five of them. Sorry. So, sum of any three sides of a quadrilateral is greater than the fourth one. Just sum of any two sides of a triangle greater than the third one, apply it twice over. One more layer to it. That's it. Nothing more than that. A group of N people worked on a project. They finished 35% of the project by working 7 hours a day for 10 days. N people, 70 hours correspond to 35 percent. If you are 100 percent, it have been n people for 200 hours. So total task is 200 n. Very clear, 7 hours a day, 35 percent, 7 hours a day, 10 days, 70 man hours into n, 70 n man hours with 35 percent of the task. Full task, that into 100 by 35, to become 200 n. 200 n man hours are required to finish this project. You know this, thereafter, 10 people left the group and the remaining people finished the rest of the project in 14 days working 10 hours a day. So the remaining n minus 10 people work 140 hours to finish the remaining task. 70 n had been done. Sorry. 70 n had been completed. Total task is 200 n. This was required to do 130. What is this 130n? 200n minus 70n. Lovely. The value of n is simplify this 140n minus 1400 is 130n. Or 140 minus 130, 10n is 1400. Or n is 140. 
the average of all three digit terms in the arithmetic progression 38 55 72 etc 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 so plus 17 plus 17 plus 17 i'm going to call this as 34 plus 4 55 plus 4 72 plus sorry 68 plus 4 102 plus 4 will be our first term and so how do we find our last term we take 999 divided by 17 see what is remaining it goes 5 times 85 149 can it go 9 times no it cannot It'll go 8 times 136 remaining is 13 so 1 that, that is that is 17 into 58 is 986 we've got that much so the last term here is going to be 986 plus 4 the first term is 106 the last term is 990 we have a bunch of terms in between how many terms are there in between we can find that this is 58 term this is 17 into 6 58 minus 5 is 53 terms are there to be honest we don't need all of that because we want to find only the average of this term sum of all of these terms are going to be n by 2 into first term plus last term average of all of this will be n by 2 the first term plus last term divided by n i don't need to find n is first term plus last term by 2 average of first term and last term is average of all the terms and so the exam i looked at this question and said look i want to do a sum of all terms and i found out this big gigantic number i could have just simplified it and bypassed it so our answer is 990 plus 106 by 2 990 plus 106 6 1096 which is 548 piece of cake we know the first term we know the last term sum of the first and last term divided by 2 is average of all n terms that's all we need to find in a triangle abc ab is equal to ac equal to 8 centimeters a circle is drawn with BC as time it passes through A. With BC as time it passes through A. That means it's a, it's a right angle triangle. It's an isosceles right angle triangle. Let's say it is ABC. A, B, C, 8, 8. Right angle. Another circle drawn with center A passes through B and C. So BC is diameter. This is our first circle. Which center A passes through B and C. Our radius is 8. We have a circle like this. Nice. Radius is 8. We've got circle 1, circle 2. Nice. Then the area in square centimeters of the overlapping region between the two circles is. So we want to find. This is circle 1, this is circle 2. We want to find the overlapping region between the two circles, which is nice. That means we are going to count this entire semicircle and then calculate this segment. And so we are going to think of it as this entire semicircle. This semicircle has a, uh, the diameter is 8 root 2 or the radius is 4 root 2, areas pi 4 root 2 whole square by 2 16 into 2 32 32 by 2 this is 16 pi the 16 pi is in the back okay. and then we need to find this thing area of overlap between these two now we need to think about in the bigger circle c2 circle what is the area of this segment and so the area of sector minus area of triangle area of sector is 1 fourth pi by 4 pi r square by 4 into 8 square minus half into 8 into 8. 8 square is 64, 64 minus 64 by 4 is 16, 16 pi minus 32. Okay. Our sum of this 16 pi plus 16 pi minus 32 is 32 pi minus 32, 32 times pi minus 1. Nice, juicy, simple question. Uh, you couldn't even guess this. The answer is more than 16 pi. Answer has got to have this triangle term. Not this, not this, not this. We're going to guess this at that point of time. A school has 5,000 students. And if the students are divided equally into teams of 9, 10, 12, or 25 each, exactly 4 are always left out. LCM of 9, 10, 12, 25. 
plus 4. That should be the term. 9 has 2 3s in it. 3 square into 2 into 5 from 10. So 2 square that has to come because of 12 and a 5 square that has to come because of this. 3 square into 2 square into 5 square is the LCM of all of those which is 3 into 2 into 5 the whole square 900. So plus 4 so 904 1804 2704 3604 4504 some 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 number like this. Right? However, if they are divided into teams of 11 each, no one is left out. Right? So the number should be a multiple of 11. 8 plus 4, 12 minus 1, 11. This works. 7 plus 4, 11 minus 2. This doesn't work. 6 plus 4, 10 minus 3. Doesn't work. 9 9 minus 4. This doesn't work. Only this works. Just 1804 is a multiple of 11. 1804 will be 174 or something like that, or 164, something like that. Of course, one time, yeah, 164, something like that. The maximum number of schools of 12 each that can be formed out of the students in the school is 1804 by 12. 4 will be remaining. 1800 by 12. 180 by 12 is 15, 150. 